Verizon once again pushing the limits of millimeter wave at a very, very large venue. So we saw them do this at the Super Bowl this year and last year, and we're seeing them do it at other larger venues in between NBA, the NBA Finals, big games, big concerts. They are using millimeter wave in a way that no other carrier is currently following in Verizon's footsteps. So Verizon for the uh, for the big uh, car race, the Formula One race that took place in Miami, the customers that were at the event used a total of 19 terabytes of data at at the race. Now, one thing I don't know if uh, AT and T or T Mobile are going to release any of their numbers. They may not. They may. They may not do it. Who knows? But. For now, what we do know, Verizon is very, very serious about millimeter wave. Very serious. Verizon fans benefited from peak download speeds of 2.8 gigabits per second on the ultra 5G wideband network. Again, speeds that high only come from millimeter wave. Right now, no C-band could go that fast. And they hit an average download speeds of more than one gig per second. So most people at the event were doing more than a gig a second. That's that's pretty impressive. And that shows you where they're taking the millimeter wave footprint. Um, I know I, I, I released a video yesterday about nodes going up. I spotted even more of millimeter wave nodes today on a different part of town. So I would like to I'm going to probably do more research on the back end to see what Verizon saw when they crunched the numbers in response to how wide scale they're deploying uh, uh, millimeter wave versus what AT&T and T-Mobile may be underestimating here. Because I don't think there is no, there there is no in between. Verizon is either going to look like a genius or they're going to look real dumb. There is no in between with this deployment. They are spending large capital dollars deploying this, not because it's expensive per the rollout, but but it's because they're doing so much of it at such a large scale. Everywhere they're putting up these nodes, they have to trench fiber to the node. So if there's no uh, fiber in that area at all, or at least their own fiber, they have to go into that neighborhood and they have to trench, you know, miles of fiber just to get fiber to where they want to place the node. So all of that is money that, that costs big money and they're not doing three, four, five and calling it a day. No, they're putting 40, 50, 60 of these in a neighborhood, maybe more. It's hard to spot them all anecdotally driving. I would have to know more specific coordinates and addresses to really spot all of them. It's much hard, uh, easier to see a tower because a tower is 60 plus feet tall. So you can kind of see every time a new one gets constructed, you can see that. The millimeter wave nodes, the small cell nodes, it's harder to see them because they're they're stuck deep inside of those neighborhoods. So you really have to drive around the neighborhoods. And of course, you know, that takes a lot of gas to really spot them. But today I spotted a lot of them. And that had me questioning what did Verizon engineers see on the numbers on behind the scenes that made them go so aggressive on this deployment versus what, like I said, what AT&T and T-Mobile may be underestimating. Because at least here, anecdotally, not one carrier, actually, I, I don't even have to say that anecdotally, there is no other carrier that's deploying it like like Verizon. There, there's just not. And I would assume on a more large nationwide scale, it's probably the same. I think there might be some areas where AT&T is probably close, closest to, to being competitive to Verizon. But other than those eight cities like New York City, Vegas, Dallas, and I think a couple of others, T-Mobile really hasn't expanded the millimeter wave at all. 
it's and I don't even know if they've expanded the millimeter wave footprint within those cities that they launched. So we'll see what happens. Um, for now, guaranteed Verizon continuing with the millimeter wave deployment. I'm already sp- spotting new ones that are in early c- construction that uh, are not built yet, but you can already see they're trenching the fiber. They're putting up the uh, the power and everything that they're going to put there. And eventually I'll go back and there will be a millimeter wave small cell node there too. And of course, these millimeter wave nodes also come with CBRS, LTE, 700 megahertz, all of that attached as well. So it's an all around enhancement for the area close by for the for the millimeter wave which i think in a lot of these neighborhoods is clearly a fixed wireless access play so they can give access to however many households they they think they can attach and that'll offload the macro from when they start deploying the c-band and allowing people to 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 get fixed wireless access on c-band So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.